Welcome to our lecture online. Another way in which we can verify that a line integral is independent of path is that if the following condition is true. So let's assume that we have a vector field and is defined as some function of x and y in the i direction and some function of x and y in the j direction. And if that function or that vector field is continuous on an open connected region, and that's of course mathematics language to make sure we have all the conditions correct, then this line integral will be independent of path if and only if, and this is the condition we're looking for, that there exists a function, let's call it f, such that the gradient of that function is equal to this vector field, or at least that is equal to the value of the function p here and the function q there. And how do we check for that? Well, the gradient in essence is taking the partial derivative of the function with respect to x, and in this case only of x and of y, because we're only dealing with two dimensions here. And of course you can see that taking the gradient of the function literally gives you a, a, a vector, so indeed that this will be indeed equal to the vector field, but if we take the partial of f with respect to x and we do not include the vector portion, the i and the j that we normally get from taking the gradient, then this, if this is equal to this and this is equal to that, with other words, the partial of that function that we choose with respect to x, if it's equal to p, which is this function right here, and if we take the partial of that function with respect to y and is equal to this q right here, then we know that this is a vector field that allows you to have a path independent line integral looking like that. So to make it, to help it make more sense, here we have an example of a field that we already verified before in a previous video that this will give us a path independent vector field. And, or I should say, this vector field gives you a path independent line integral. And so what we're going to do now is find the function, and then I found the function for us, it's x times y, and now let's take the parcel of that with respect to x and the parcel of that with respect to y and see what we get. So we take the partial of the function with respect to x, which is the partial with respect to x of x times y, and of course this gives you y, and notice that this gives us the value right here of the function p, which is this y right here in our example. And then we'll do it again. Now we'll take the partial of the function with respect to y. And of course, that's going to be the partial of x times y. So the partial with respect to y of x times y is equal to x. And that, of course, is equal to the q here in our example, the x right there. So if we find a function, in this case, we took x and y, in such a way that the partial of that function with respect to x gives us the function in front of the i component, and then we take the partial of the function with respect to y, and then we get the function, which is the component in front of the j component right here, and that then makes up the vector field that we started with, then we know that this vector field, if we do a line integral over that, over a closed loop, that will be equal to zero, and if we do a line integral from point A to point B, Regardless of what pack we take, we always will get the same result. And that's what we call condition do for independence for line integrals.